Good morning. Mitch, I thought you would be down here. <laughs> I am so glad to be with you all this morning. I am about to conclude that you all like me. <laughs> I do like you. I just enjoy coming here because when I come here, I know I can pull out my jeans. <laughs> Suits are nice, but I really like jeans. And so I enjoy that. Uh, and I just enjoy being here. When I came in this morning, uh, I saw so many faces that I knew. It was kind of like I was at my church. And so it's nice to come to a place of worship and feel so welcome. And uh, the youth, they just kind of had me going there, and I forgot, okay, I got to preach. <laughs> so I, I really enjoyed them, and I hope my friend Mike is uh, having as much fun as I am. He's probably wishing he had brought some earplugs, but uh, hopefully he's having a great time as well. This morning, I want to uh, spend some time talking about our lives and how we should live them. And I want you to remember this thought. Live, and you've heard this before, love and laugh. Live, love, and laugh. If you can do those three things, you will find the new year will be your greatest year ever. And we all do that, but we don't do it consistently. We do it on this day and that day, but I want you to learn to do that all the time. Uh, I've been practicing it. I haven't perfected it yet, but I'm working on it. Uh, I've chosen not to make too many resolutions because I struggle with just one. Uh, my major one is always weight. Uh, getting there, haven't gotten there, but I'm getting there. But I think that if I can just learn to live a little more, uh, if I could love a little more and, and laugh a little more. And so that's what I want to talk about today. Now, um, three scriptures I'm going to share with you today about living, uh, loving, and laughing. First scripture is in the book of John, uh, chapter 6 and verse 6. And in that verse, it gives us a choice about our lives. Tells us that there are two entities that are vying for us, two different entities that want our lives and want us to do what they want us to do. The first entity says this, he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's all that entity thinks about us. And then the second entity says, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. And so the choice is ours. Would we accept the first entity or the second one? And I've learned that I get to choose. Both are, are vying for me. Both are trying to get my attention. One for an abundant life. One to take away my joy. And I get to choose. What I don't get to choose are the circumstances. You know, I, I can't choose. I was thinking about Newtown. And I, I remember uh, Emily Parker's father. And I thought it was so neat that through all of that pain, a pain that I personally can't relate to, I just can't imagine that, he chose to take a positive right route. He didn't have to do that. He could have stood up in front of the cameras and just be totally angry. But he chose to be pleasant. He, he chose to be positive about a bad situation. So it, it taught me and reminded me that in life, even when things aren't going well, you get to dictate. You get to say, I don't like this situation. I don't like what I'm going through. I don't like the way this played out. But I choose to not let it make me negative. I choose not to let it make me bitter. 
And if we can go into the new year thinking about, I am going to choose to be happy. I am not going to let my bills dictate my happiness. You know, I used to think when I first got in, uh, into the world and bills start coming, I kind of thought if I got behind on a bill, which nobody wants to do, that my world was coming to an end. And being young and not having a lot of training on, on how to manage money, I found out when I got behind and I thought the world was going to end, it didn't end. And when I got that one paid, I was so happy and I didn't think about, oh, a new one's going to come. <laughs> and so I concluded to pay them a, a, as uh, properly as I can, but if I don't, I'm still going to enjoy life because it's too short. I've concluded that I get a, a limited amount of time here, and so I am going to make the very best of it. Uh, I've decided that uh, I like to be happy. I, I've been happy, and I've been unhappy, and I like happy better. <laughs> so I just chose that one. And sometimes people say to me, because my nickname is B.Y., they say, B.Y., why are you so happy all the time? Because that's what I chose to be. I chose to be that because I like the way it feels. Uh, I've experienced the other, but I don't like the way it feels. And so I've chose to live my life being happy, understanding that I can't control all of the things that happen in it, but I can control my response to it. And as a result, I have learned to get the most out of life. You've heard the expression of the glass being half full and half empty. Mine is always half full. Always. And that's something that I purposely did, sometimes forget, but most of the time it is always there because I have purposed it. And that's the way I've chosen to live my life. And I just think that it would be so awesome if we all could learn to live our lives in such a way that we're going to be happy when the kids are running us crazy. We can choose to be happy. And let me, let me tell you some secrets, uh, parents, when it comes to your kids. You have to remember, it's you against them. <laughs> They're going to do their part to run you crazy. And so you got to get some plans so you can run them crazy. <laughs> Don't let them make you lose your mind. Make them lose their mind. <laughs> if you can do that, you'll really enjoy life. Just make them. <laughs> my, my grandson said, Papa, you so mean. I said, great. <laughs> that means you don't want to play right now. He said, I still want to play. <laughs> And so I have learned to, to just get the best out of life. And that's what we all want to do. We want to live. In the new year, we want to just have a great time. You know, there's nothing wrong with having fun all the time. You can be serious. You, you can uh, do things that, that don't have to laugh all the time, but still, just enjoy. If you have to be somewhere, you know, uh, when you go to family out of town and you don't want to go there and your plane ticket was late and all that, hey, enjoy the trip. You know when you go on a trip and you're driving and you got little ones and they're going to say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I got to go to the bathroom. I'm hungry. You know all of that. Set your mind. No, we're not there. The bathroom is a mile up the road. The food is in the back. Choose to be happy. Choose. If you do that, you will find yourself saying, wow, this is all right. When I was younger uh, and we would go on trips, I was so set on trying to get to the location that I missed all of the scenery getting there because my focus was not on all of the states in between my focus was on getting from point a to point b but there was so much i could enjoy between those two places and that's what life is about getting the most out of everything second verse i want to share with you is in matthew 6 and 27 and it says something like this which of you, 
by worrying, and I'm really paraphrasing, which of you by worrying can pay your bills? And if worrying could pay bills, then I would switch that happiness to, you know, be worried at least once a month. It doesn't change. That's the, that's the point that that scripture is talking about. Being upset doesn't change the situation, but it does change something. It doesn't change the situation, but what it does change is you. That's all the changes, you. And so it is very important to understand you want total control of your life. You want control over how things are going to be. And then in that same chapter, he gave some analogies about why we shouldn't worry. He said, if you notice that the birds don't plant seeds or anything, but yet they eat every day and they don't worry. He said that flowers don't do anything, but yet they come up as beautiful as, as anything every year. In other words, nature is provided for, but yet it doesn't worry. And he says this, and again, I'm paraphrasing, if nature doesn't have to worry about anything, and I created nature, and as Christians, you are my children, how much more will I take care of you? And so why should we worry when we have a, a God? I tell my people all the time, don't say things that the Bible has in them unless you believe it. Don't say, my God will provide. And then when you come up a little short, oh, what am I going to do? I thought you said your God will provide. Here's what I've learned about God providing. He didn't get specific and so I put the specifics in. God said he'll provide, so I need a car. And I get a car, but it wasn't the car I wanted. And so now I'm wondering, well, God, I thought you said you'd give me this car. No, not this car, a car. Well, God, I told you I wanted a job, and look where I'm at. No, 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 a job. Not this job, but, but God, my, my lifestyle, I can't live on this level. I said a job, adjustments. If you want to have a happy life, you're going to have to learn adjustments. See this picture right here? This is my wife, Sherry. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> we... We were in Hawaii, and uh, we were on the street, and there were lots of vendors out there doing a lot of crazy things. And this one guy had this bird. And he was walking around with the bird on his hands, and he would let you hold the bird on your hand. And my wife is an introvert, and she doesn't do animals at all. <laughs> and so we were... I think I held the bird on my hand. My brother and sister-in-law were there. They held the bird on their hand. And when he got close to my wife, he didn't say to her, uh, ma'am, would you like to put it on your head? He just walked up, stuck it on her head. <laughs> and look at her face. She, she's laughing, but yet she had to do some quick adjustments. <laughs> Real quick adjustments, because I'm... I'm in shock. I'm trying to hurry up and get the camera up because this is not real. My wife is adjusting and she still has a smile on her face with a bird on her head. And so that's how life is sometimes. Sometimes you're planning one thing and it just goes to the exact opposite way and it happens without you knowing it she had no idea and sometimes we just don't have any idea but we are just and look how she did it with a smile that's how we should adjust with smiles on our faces let me tell you about the second thing love uh, love and, and I tell my members all the time 
I didn't, I think I missed English in school because I don't know verbs and nouns and all. I'm not good at that. But I, I do know that love is an action word. It's not just something you say. It is an action. And so when you go into the new year and, and you want, it, uh, want people to know you love them, you have to do some things. Mike Moses and I love each other. Like guys, like guys. But we love each other. And we demonstrate that through our actions. We interact. We don't just uh, preach at each other's churches. We go out, hang out. We eat together. We act crazy together. We do stuff that members can't see us do together. <laughs> we just have fun together because we love each other. Love is an action. If you tell your wife you love her, she's, she's going to feel good about that. But after a while, you keep telling her you love her, but you're not doing anything. You haven't purchased anything. You haven't bought anything. Heaven, love is action. If you love your kids, you have to show it. It's something that is demonstrated. It's not expensive uh, to demonstrate love. Uh, men just... Shock her with your love by letting her come home and you cook. And she'll be so excited. Wow, he really cares. It doesn't have to be anything big. It just has to be doing something. In Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about love the entire chapter. And some of the things that it says about love is this. Love is patient. And it that means that I have to not do it my way because my way is, is faster, or at least I think. My way is better, at least I think. Love says, okay, I'll, I'll let you do it your way. This is killing me on the inside. <laughs> You're not doing it right, but I'm going to encourage you and let you do it your way because that's what love is. Love is patient. And so... When, when you go into the new year, demonstrate that love by being patient with others. It says love is kind. Love is not mean to people. Love is always pleasant, not when people are pleasant to you. I got this thing about if you're, if you're real mean to me, I'm going to really get you back by being nice to you. It's hard to fight nice. And so love is, is, is kind. It says love doesn't seek its own. It's not about me. It's, it's not about what I want. It is about you. God demonstrated love through his son Jesus. The one thing that I'm very comfortable that Jesus did not want to do is die on the cross. I'm very sure of that. Nobody wants nails in their hands and feet. Nobody wants to be uh, forsaken by their closest comrades. Nobody wants that. But love doesn't seek his own. He only cared about us. And he cared about us so much that he was willing to do whatever it took to save us. That's what love is. Uh, that same chapter says love is not puffed up or love doesn't think is all that. In other words, your position in life, love understands that that doesn't make you any different or any better than anyone else. Your nationality, your color, your anything, you're just people. Love doesn't see colors. Love doesn't see positions. Love doesn't see money. Love just sees how it can do something good for someone else. And if you can go into the new year with love, here's something else I've learned about love. When I give it, I get it. Even if that person doesn't always return it, when I do something good for somebody through love, I feel better. Just makes me feel better. As a matter of fact, the Bible even talks about that. It says it is better to give than to receive. And I tried to figure out now, why is God saying that? Because to give 
means that, that you're taking your resources and de deplete, uh, depleting them. But here's what God said to me about giving. If you are the one that's giving, that means you have the resources. And so if I'm the one receiving, that means I don't have the resources. I'd much rather be the one with the resources. So it's always better to give because that means you have. It also uh, means that when you give, the Bible says, as a man soweth, that shall he also reap. When I give of my resources, God will give them back. The only reason that, that I can stand up here and preach without any notes or anything is because God gave me that gift. But I have to take that gift and give it to you. And as long as I'll give it to you, he'll keep giving it to me. That's giving and receiving. As long as I can stand up here and, and do this and not think, wow, look at me. I've, I got it going on up here. I don't have to read. As long as I can keep that out of my head, God can say, he's doing my will. Let me keep blessing him. Let me keep talking to him. Let me keep telling him what these people need to hear. That's giving and receiving. I've also learned in giving that you may give one way and receive another way. The Bible talks about tithes and offerings, and it says, Bring your all tithes in the storehouse, there be meat in my house. Prove me herewith, says the Lord of hosts, I'll open the doors of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. Here's what I've learned about that. I used to think that that meant if I give money, he'll give me money. But that's not what it means. It goes on and says a little further down, I will destroy or keep the devourer from destroying you. So when I give financially, I may not get the money back, but God will keep that thing that was going to affect my life in a negative way from doing it. And so love gives, but you can never give and God not bless you. Can't do it. It's not possible for you to give. You can't love and God not bless you. All those things come from him. Let me share the last thing with you. Laugh. Laughter. Live, love, and laugh. When Mitch came up, I, th I think you laughed twice. Uh, when I came up, you laughed about four or five times. <laughs> Do I look funny? <laughs> You've been laughing. Studies have shown if you laugh more, you'll be a happier person, you'll live longer, you'll be a healthier person. Laughter increases your health. It increases your, your place in life. In Singapore, apparently the rich people don't laugh much. They did a study uh, of the richest people in Singapore and found out that they were the unhappiest people in the country. The richest were the unhappiest, which says to me, materialistic things won't make you happy. Now, if you are already happy, then you're okay. See, I'm happy without them. Now, if you just gave me some of yours, I could be happy with them. But I'm just happy it's not about the material things. They just add to what I already have. And so many people's lives have been destroyed because they thought their joy, their happiness would be in the new house, the new boat, the new car, the new position. Those things won't make you happy. They will give you a high. The only problem with a high is you got to come down. And so true happiness is not with material things. True happiness comes within. True happiness is finding those things that, that will always be there, like your family, like your friends, relationships. Those are things that make you happy. Those things that, that you've seen, all of us seen on television where some older man has, that was rich, spent or married some 20-some year old, he's looking for happiness. Now, you would think with his millions or billions, he wouldn't need some girl that he should know only wants his money. But it's happiness 
People will do anything to find happiness, not understanding that it's already within them. It doesn't cost money. And I tell my people all the time, our, our church is not a wealthy church by any means. As a matter of fact, we're very close to poor. But I've told them, if you can be happy poor, you can be happy in anything. Uh, when I married that beautiful person, I was happy. And I had no money. She only married me for my name. That's all I could give my wife. But we were happy. And that's what life is all about. And so as you go into the new year, listen, it's not going to just happen. You're going to have to make a conscious effort to enjoy life, to live it to the fullest. Make a conscious effort to do that. Make a conscious effort to love, not to say it, but to do it. You're going to have to make a conscious effort to enjoy life. You know, today I'm going to be laughing and screaming and having a good time because the Panthers are going to win, what's that, four in a row. <laughs> and if they let me down, I'm going to rant and rave for about a minute or two. Then I'm going to have to go and watch the Eagles and the Cowboys. <laughs> and that's how you need to live your life. Have fun and joy. And if your team loses, move on. In life, you're going to lose some games. Move on to the next game. There's, I tell people, don't hold on to your problems. Let them go. Well, I like my problems. Still, let them go. There are some new ones waiting to come. <laughs> you don't ever have to hold on to troubles. There are always new ones waiting for you. And so as you go into this year, again, live. Live it to the fullest. You dictate it. Love with all you have. Oh, that's such a great feeling. And then laugh a lot. Laugh a lot. You'll be amazed. You know, it won't give you ulcers, but worrying will. So laugh. It is one, it's just, it's a free feeling that you get. And so as we go into this new year, let's get the most that we can get out of it. Let us all bow. Father, thank you for this privileged time that you've allowed me to spend with your children, my brothers and my sisters. And as we go into this new year, this new time, we ask that you be in our lives to the fullest, understanding that if you are with us and we are conscious of your presence, that we will get the most out of life. If we will acknowledge you in all of our ways, you'll direct our path and, and we can live, love, and laugh to the fullest. And I just say thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you shall do. And I ask it all in the only name that matters. Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you.